I booked the biggest job of my entire fucking career. But who am I? I'm just some farm boy from Washington State with a dream to move to Hollywood and tell stories. To impact people's lives the way that mine was impacted. But I didn't know anybody or anything about how to do this. The first three and a half years I was out here, I spent it couch surfing. I lived in my car, I took odd jobs where I could. I would sleep on friends' couches for no more than a few days because I didn't want them to know that I was what I like to call functionally homeless. Every penny that I made went towards my dream. That was tough. Here's what I knew about myself when I moved into a world that I didn't yet understand. I will outwork everyone else. And if that fails, I'll outsmart them. You have to be so good that the world can't ignore you. And it takes time to achieve a dream. Ten years for me. I sacrificed a lot for it, and I don't think a lot of people know that. I don't think they realize what it takes to make your dream come true. You know, it's, it's lonely chasing your dream. Um, I lost uh, friends and family on the way. Some of which I would just like to give one more hug to. And others who will just simply never speak to me again. But I think that's part of the sacrifice that we all make. I think we understand when you're chasing something that's bigger than you imagined, you understand the cost. Once I saw that it was possible, that I realized that this is a tangible, very real goal for me, <laughs> I couldn't be stopped. Pearson for day. Something that they don't tell you is that the success can be just as lonely as the start. There are just as many ups and downs when you think you're at the top of your game as when you're at the bottom of your game. It's all a part of the journey. I fucking love the journey. I used my modeling career to spearhead my trajectory from modeling into commercial acting into theatrical acting. And it's funny because I remember on my journey, a lot of people would ask me, what is your plan B? And I would say, I don't have one. I worked my ass off for this. You guys, just to give you a little perspective of how hard I work every year and how much I put myself on the line. Imagine submitting six to eight hundred job applications a year, only to book roughly two percent of those. I put my heart and soul into these auditions, only to get told, thanks. Don't forget about me when you're famous, right? They know that you're on a trajectory. If you're serious, if you're committed, if you have put your life towards this dream or this goal, and they know that there is a shift coming. I made my move. Blood, sweat, and tears outside of two Emmy nominations, and moving to LA, this is the single most monumental next step in my entire career. 
Deadline just made the announcement today that I am in the Man from Toronto, the new Kevin Hart movie. Yes! I don't think you guys heard or understood what I just said. I just booked the Man from Toronto. Yeah! Kevin Hart, the guy that sells out arenas. Yeah, yeah. Woody Harrelson, the guy that loves talking about Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. And Patrick Hughes, the guy that directed Hitman's Bodyguard in Expendables 3. I'm gonna be in a theater near you. You can't do any better than that. It's the best movie I've ever heard of. Holy shit. Object to the test. We fucking did it, holy shit. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Bro. Bro. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Right here. It's not only gonna change your life, it's gonna change mine because I'm your fucking best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Mama son! It's such good news, I'm so happy for my son. What you doing? That was so good. I'm gonna do the way you do. Rashid! Are you feeling? Oh my god, look at my hair, you're crazy. Don't do this to me. You look beautiful, Rashid. I, I never stop believing in you. <clears throat> <laughs> you dick. <laughs> okay. We fucking did it! Dude! Did it. Well, I did it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, how hard did we work our asses off for this one? For years and years, man. Hey, goodbye. Bro! Congratulations! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Bro! This is it! That's right. That's that's the one we've been waiting for. A hundred percent. What? What's that? What do you see? Hey, my boy's looking like a star! You're gonna be working with Kevin Hart, right? Are you ready? Kevin Hart, Woody Harrelson. Kevin Hart and I are gonna make a TikTok! Y'all wanna be on my TikTok? We have to, we have to. I'm so, so happy you, you I mean, you're so talented, your friend, my brother, and, and, and when I saw this this morning, I wanted to drive it, like, fun, finally, like, yeah. you know, like, something fun to work on, and some amazing talent, you know, I mean, the cast is just ridiculous. Hey, yo, daddy yo! Yo! Do you see the article? Yes, I did. Congratulations. Are you taking a picture of us? No, I'm filming it for the vlog. Oh my god. Give me a big reaction, be a woo! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Bro. Just promise me one thing. Yeah. I can bring a hot date to the red carpet event. Bro, I am your hot date. Come on, baby. This is dessert. Yeah. Pearson, you've already had so many achievements. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking insane. Is this your biggest movie yet? I've never done anything like this. That's dope, man. That was fire, dog. So, you gonna give me a like, co star role, you know? Oh! Let me talk to my boy Kevin Hart really quick and uh, see what's up. Hey, y'all wanna be on my TikTok? Did you get a hundred texts from friends and old fuck buddies and random? Everybody's blowing up my phone right now. It's Enjoy every moment. Video record all day. Congratulations! Thank you. You passed on like a. What would have been the biggest opportunity of your life? Yeah. And this one came along like a month later, and that's like, that's crazy. Yeah. It kind of goes to show, like, you have to bet on yourself if you have a dream. Always bet on yourself. I feel fucking jacked to the tits. Jack to the tits! I'm jacked to the tits! <laughs> no, man, that's dope, bro. Congratulations, man. Thanks, man. Baby. Woo! Dude, I'm happy for you, brother. Thanks, bro. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm really proud of my boy. Uh, you know, we don't have to go uh, chop off no thumbs because, you know, they uh, get the pot. Dude, in a sense, that's not what it meant. They start to see you as the next generation of, of, uh, of action star. Yeah. And Superman being the, uh, Superman being the pinnacle of that. Yeah, that's incredible. I'm so excited for you. Either. Listen, I can't wait to be best friends with Kevin Hart and make a TikTok. Y'all wanna be on my TikTok? Another chapter of success. All right, go make more babies like me. Yeah, never. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Love you too, Pearson. Good job. Josiah Akinyele, baby, what's up? Hey, you know what, Pearson? Talk to me. Best is yet to come. Absolutely. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Woo! Very proud of my fight. Man, this is, it's such a good day. The stock market is up. I don't have to bet against it too much anymore, at least in the immediate. <laughs>
No, is quarantine over? No, the traffic was so nice. We have to pack up and move to a new reality, Morty. What's up, bro? Adelia. Hello, superstar. You're gonna be famous. Yeah, I'm gonna be famous. How do you feel about the news? I like it. <laughs> I'm gonna be like watching me like. Yeah. <laughs> Might be a tight squeeze. You know, we got the dope range about to get wrapped, but. I don't think he's gonna have that piece of shit Sequoia for too long. Don't you ever fucking say that about my car? You just again. booked the movie. Yeah. I buy did. a Lamborghini. That, when Kevin Hart pulls up, he's gonna be like, nice Sequoia. You wanna fucking fight? You wanna fucking fight, dude? Did you lose your virginity, virginity in, in that car? I did lose my virginity in that car. You fight me, bro. You fucking fight me, bro. You want the neighbors you won't. like us? You won't. You fucking won't. Subscribe to my vlog. Yes! You know what the cool place about the thing about this place is? What? <laughs> it's got trees you can climb. Oh. Good. This is how you eat a sushi to go in quarantine. Don't forget to wash your hands with sports wipes. Sports wipes. Deodorized. For your fucking ball sack. Who's that? Who's inside? Hello and welcome to the dine-in sushi bar. Yes. Take your towel. Here you go. Oh. Chopstick. A little extra soy sauce. Oh, thank you. Right this way, sir. Thank you. <gasps> wow. Nice sequoia. Here we have sashimi with uh -huh. garlic and jalapenos. Yeah. Next to that, we have a crispy tuna rice cake. Uh huh. California roll and some shrimpy dip. Yeah. This concoction that looks like a long ass hot dog. Yeah. Your typical. Yeah. Sushi. <laughs> <laughs> the worst host of all time. <laughs> yeah. No? No, yeah. I'm just hey. Are you actually gonna put music or make us look dumb? I'm not gonna make you look dumb. Because <laughs> I know what you're gonna do. I do it all the time. Alright, everybody. How about you put music to this? Alright. In another episode of Support Your Local Business, we just had Sushi Dan, and it was freaking delicious in the back of my car. Everybody tell me something dirty that you did the other night. I, I covered what? myself in peanut butter. That was dirty. <laughs> that was just so funny. Here it goes. That's why popular people are f***ing dumb. All right, what's everybody's favorite movie? Titanic. Titanic? Oh, Interstellar. Really? Gladiator. Gladiator? Ooh. Shooter with Mark Wahlberg. What's your guys' new favorite movie? Uh, I haven't watched there's it. this new one coming out, Man from Winnipeg. I'm really excited. Fucking! <laughs> you trash panda. <laughs> you fucking... All I know is Kevin Hart and I are going to make a TikTok. TikTok! Look at that. Comparison to my face. I memorize all of that in the last 365 days. I make a deal with myself every year to keep every single audition to remind myself to work my ass off for the next one. And I don't want to keep stacking up this fucking paper. I need to book something that will change my life. And there's two ways I remind myself. Number one is from the things I've accomplished, that I'm worthy of something better than the last thing I did. Those two Emmy nominations remind me of that every day. The second thing I remind myself with are the things that I've lost, the things that I haven't booked. Guys, I can get rid of this shit now. What better way to celebrate than to light a cigar and burn every single one of these old auditions that I booked and didn't book, that's a piece of my past, and to begin the next phase of my journey. Out with the old, and in with the new. Hopefully this is like some sort of ritual sacrifice and I book the next Star Wars movie. Yo, shout out to uh, Lucasfilm. Notice me, Kathleen Kennedy. Notice me, senpai, notice me. This is the end of an era. The end of my life, of my past, and the beginning of a whole new life for me. I'm gonna use all the ash from this. <laughs> plant in my garden. I'm gonna be honest, I've only made it like an eighth of the way through all of this, maybe less, and it's been like 20 minutes. <laughs> the rest of it will go into recycling. Probably should have done that in the first place. So like a responsible adult, I will put out the fires that I start. Here's the last 15 pounds of the paper going in to the recycling. Not in my life forever. My life's about to fucking change. My whole goal is to change my life entirely. To set myself up for wins from here on out. To set myself up for greatness. 
and to make new goals and new achieve to achieve higher and bigger dreams than I could have ever imagined to be possible. And this, that shit, that's the end of an era. And this is the beginning of a new one. Fuck it, I gotta post.